Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how you can recreate this effect using godless blotting now staying entirely inside of Adobe After Effects and just using your phone. So stick around to the end so you can find out exactly how you can do the same thing. Okay, so this initial effect is actually inspired by a scene from the movie Civil War, you know, one of the Captain America movies. Now in this scene, we see Tony Stark walking through this fake room, showing him as the younger self and then even his dead parents. But what's really interesting about the scene is that it then reveals that it is a fake room. So I'm pretty sure they actually use a lot of CG and probably thousands of dollars to be able to complete the scene. And so to our advantage with the technology that I'm gonna be showing you in this video, I'm pretty sure that even a beginner can recreate this effect. But to start off the video, what exactly is Gaussian splatting? So essentially, Gaussian splatting is a technique that makes particles and visual effects look smooth and blended by turning them into soft, blurry points in 3D space. Now, the reason why this is fascinating is because before, you had to take scans of objects and it would end up giving you a large file with unrealistic lighting and even unrealistic textures. But when you actually scan with Gaussian splatting, what it's actually doing, like we said, it's scanning and making tiny little dots within 3D space. Why is that cool? So when you actually scan a space or even an object, it's already gonna automatically capture how light affects that same material. So if you're recording a metal object, it's gonna be able to scan and take information of the reflections and even how light hits and bounces off of it. But honestly, if you're watching this video already, that means that you probably already know what Gaussian splatting is. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I get my Gaussian splat scans and then how I'm able to then import it and modify it all within Adobe After Effects. So, here we go. Okay, so step number one. Now, I've seen two different apps that do this the best, Polycam and Luma AI. Both these apps are free and I think they both do have a paid version, but the important thing is that they both have free options which is pretty cool. Now, I personally use Polycam, but honestly, the workflow is pretty much the same. Now, whatever environment that you are scanning, make sure that you're taking very slow steps and that you're trying to get as much detail of the environment as possible. A little tip is that I like to put my camera into 0.5 mode, where you capture more of the environment at the same time. Now, once you are done scanning the room and you feel pretty confident with the amount of information that you were able to take, make sure that before you hit export or render, whatever the option says on the final screen, you wanna click on the Gaussian Splat option and then just choose the highest quality option that they give you. So once you follow all these steps, you can now go into your desktop or laptop and sign in to the account that you've made the scan on. And you can usually download it straight off of their website, whether you're using Polycam or Luma. Now, with full transparency, you do have to have a paid plugin to be able to bring this into After Effects. But if I'm being honest, it is completely worth it, especially if you want the best results. Okay. Now it's finally to bring in the actual scan into After Effects. The very first thing that we're gonna be doing is something that I usually start off with either way, and that is rotoscoping. Now this is a pretty straightforward effect. I like to duplicate it and then pre-compose it so that it's um, in its own little folder. Once we do that, we're gonna select the layer, go up here and click the roto brush button, and we're just gonna go through and select our subject. Now it's really important that we go through and we're very detailed with what we want to cut out. Once I have that, I'm going to hit this button freeze. And what's that going to do is it's just going to automatically load the entire footage. But once you have your footage back, um, it should look something like this with the background completely removed. So the very next step that we have to do is 3D track the scene. So you click the button I just did and just kind of like before, you just kind of wait for the computer to automatically work in the background. Once that's done, you're gonna to wanna to select the area. I usually like picking out the floor so that we can use that as a foundation later. Okay, so earlier we actually downloaded the Gaussian Splat file off of um, Polycam's website directly. So I'm gonna grab that file and I'm gonna drop it right into After Effects. Now you'll notice that nothing happens. So I'm gonna bring this to the bottom and not touch it. I have to create a new layer, a new solid layer. So I'm gonna name this real quick, Gaussian Splat, just so that we can like keep it organized a little bit. Go to the effect and we're gonna apply the effect from iRealix, Gaussian Splatting, pretty straightforward. Click Model, go in to this one, you wanna select the Gaussian Splat layer. 
Now, this is what's gonna pop up. It's pretty confusing and it looks like it didn't work, but in reality, the model is there. So, what we have to do is create a null for the Gaussian spot so that we can adjust it and transform it. So, we're gonna to go to the null layer that we created earlier when we made the camera, and we are going to copy the position so that we can then paste that to the null of the Gaussian splat. And that should give us a good basis. So, as you can see, it just looks like a giant ball, but this is what it is. But it's currently really small. So what we have to do is scale this up. And as you can see, you can start kind of seeing the actual model itself. So I'm just gonna keep playing with the position and the rotation for a bit until I kind of find it where it's supposed to be. I think it's still pretty small, so I need to adjust the size. There we go. Start seeing the kitchen I um, scanned and just trying to get it to the right perspective with everything. Okay, I am then gonna to toggle on my roto layer so I can see myself on top of the Gaussian Splat model. That way I can make any kind of like scale adjustments to make sure that I am fitting correctly in the scene. So I think it's pretty close, but I'm definitely still off. So I'm just gonna keep making adjustments, messing around with the rotation, the scale, and the position until I get it just right. So now I'm gonna show you how to actually do the like disintegration effect or you know, the effect where it all starts to dis disappear. Um, this plugin actually makes it super easy for you to be able to do that. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. So you wanna go into the layer where you have the effect applied. You're gonna go down to the crop section. You have to toggle on this switch so that it, it's actually applied. Once you do that, I also like to toggle on the crop shape so that it shows you what exactly it is that you're cropping, just like this. Now I have this option selected and I'm going to deselect it so that it kind of inverts the effect and I'm going to keyframe it to where the model begins to disintegrate and disappear. And you can just kind of play around the settings and customize it to your own liking. And then something else that definitely brings the entire effect together is sound effects. So I wanted to add some sort of Jarvis, you know, voice over to the video. Welcome back, sir. I was thinking that today's office. So this actually brings us right into today's sponsor. Motion Array. Okay, so if you are a creator, a photographer, a video editor, or just any kind of creator in this industry, I know for a fact that you've heard about them because you, just like me, know how awesome they are. They are the website that have infinite amount, okay, maybe not infinite, but I would say a lot of different templates, footage, sound effects, everything that you need. They got it for After Effects, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve. I even think I saw a whole section for Final Cut Pro, if you're still using that. They have a wide range of different kind of music, sound effects, just like this one, or this one, or even, and what's cool is that they just released a brand new feature that by using AI, you can make your own custom voiceover for your videos. I know it sounds pretty crazy, right? But if you don't believe me, I could honestly finish this entire episode without using my real voice. And if I don't like the one I've selected, I can just change it to almost any style I want. See, and the possibilities are absolutely endless. So what you can do is go over to the voiceover category, find a voice that you like, then type in the prompt that you want the voice to say. Now, if you didn't like the way they said it, just change the emotion. They have a bunch of different options of how you want the voice to actually say the line. If you don't believe me yet, I want to encourage you to go check it out for, for yourself. So, if you actually go to the link that's in the description of this video right now, that's going to get you $50 off. If you ask me, that's a really good price. And having access to Motion Array in your arsenal is going to make your editing like they say, not just better, but it's gonna make you the best. So I want to really encourage you to go down, click that link, and just follow the prompts. And if you think of a really cool way of how you would use the AI voiceover feature, I would love to know. So let me know down in the comments, and I would love to see your ideas. Anyways, here's a cheesy fire transition to go back into the tutorial. So once you get it to the spot that you really want it, you honestly could leave it right there, but if I look, if you look back at the original shot, I ended up adding some really cool glowy hologram type lights to the effect. Now to do that, what I did was I first rendered the clip just as the dot and spot. So I turned off the roto layer and the background original footage layer. 
So in order to do the actual scanning effect, what I'm gonna do is kind of cheat it a little bit. So what you first wanna do is duplicate the gauge's flat layer and you're gonna apply the effect hue and saturation. This way we can bump up the, like the brightness to it to make the layer completely white. And we're going to add a solid black layer right underneath that white gauge's flat layer. So it'll look something like this. Hey Alice, and even just that I think looks pretty cool. But we are going to duplicate the Goddess Plot layer again, and we are going to apply the effect Set Map, or um, what's it called? Uh, simple Choker. That's really good. And then we're just going to make this layer black instead of white. Okay, so here's kind of where the cheat code kind of comes in. The ProductionCrate.com actually has a really cool effect for free that you can apply to make any layer look like a hologram. So you're just gonna to go to the website, productioncrate.com, go and find the scripts or plugin section. And you're gonna find where it says hologram. And you're just gonna download the script real quick. And again, it's completely free, so that's pretty awesome. Once you're back in the After Effects, you wanna select the layer you wanna apply the hologram effect to. You're gonna to go to File, Scripts, and then Run Script File. I know it's kind of confusing at first, but it's super easy. You then wanna click on the script file you just downloaded from Production Grade. And once you do that, there's this little pop-up that's gonna come up just like this. And what's cool is that they have a bunch of different like presets that you can use. I personally like the, the basic one. It's really straightforward and um, I think it has like one of the cooler looks. So you know, again, you're gonna select the layer you want, click on this plus button and it's automatically gonna add the hologram effect to it. Look, look how easy and cool that was. And it's super fast. Yeah, and like what's pretty cool is that you can then customize like the color, the amount of glow that you wanna add to it. Um, you just change it and just add your own kind of spice to it. Okay, so congratulations, you actually made it to the end of this tutorial. Now, I hope that you were able to learn something new, and if you didn't, I'm sorry, I'll try better next time. But if you did learn something and you do end up making your own version of this effect, please post it on Instagram and tag me. That is one of the best ways that I am able to see your work. And if you have any other ideas of how you would apply this same effect, or even use Motion Array in your workflow, please leave it down in the comments. We would love to see your thoughts on the matter. So if you enjoyed this video, please maybe consider liking and subscribing, leaving a few comments. Um, that is one of the best ways to, to support the channel. Um, anyways, I'm gonna stop talking now. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah, outros. I don't know how to make them.